Thank you for joining me, Professor Pope. Quite the party, isn't it? The Launchpad Cafe certainly knows how to put on a show. Well, you know what they say. Anything goes. Indeed. Do you have the item? Active learning techniques for student groups. Remarkable. And in return, what we discussed? Of course. Formative assessments. We had a deal. The deal was for summative. Oh, sorry. Did I say I had summative assessment professional development? Sorry. I've only got formative. I was so close. I've been chasing these strategies for years and I'm at a loss forever. Well, hold on. I may not have the summative strategies, but I have something that might help you find them. A map. This is perfect. You coming along for the ride this time? It's intact. Gas up the plane. We'll leave tonight. I just need to change. Of course. Wait. Change? Change into what? Ready for another adventure? Welcome to Launch Your Classroom. I'm Rachel Durant. All assessments are not created equal. As teachers, we use two different types of assessments with distinctly different goals. Formative assessment happens before, during, and after lessons to check for understanding and inform subsequent teaching. These short, frequent checks can come in the form of entry or exit tickets, quizzes, or even instructional games. The teacher observes and takes note of what is working and what is not, and adjusts instruction accordingly. On the other hand, summative assessment is used at the end of a unit of study to measure what students learned. In some schools, teachers create summative assessments either on their own or with their PLC, while in other schools, these assessments are provided by the school district. These assessments are considered high stakes and final and are often administered at the end of a grading period or near the end of the school year. Summative assessments provide some of the most visible evidence of student learning. Teachers can use the scores of these assessments to help them plan for future classes and to address their own instructional strengths and areas for improvement. Summative assessment data plays a major role in school and school district decisions about student placement, curriculum, and even teacher evaluations. Because of this, teachers must take great care in preparing students for summative assessments, both academically and emotionally. First and foremost, teachers must carefully plan to ensure that students have been taught what will be assessed. In addition, teachers are responsible for helping students feel as comfortable as possible so that results clearly indicate what was learned without being affected by test anxiety. This is why many teachers give their students opportunities to practice using a format similar to what they will see on the summative assessment. Teaching test-taking strategies and mindfulness exercises can also help students develop confidence. Even though each student is responsible for showing what they know, teachers must carefully prepare their students so that summative assessment results accurately reflect their learning. So, let's take a closer look at how to intentionally design these assessments with our first strategy. My learning unit on earthquakes and volcanoes is coming to an end. 
So now is the perfect time to build a summative assessment for my students. These tests provide valuable learning opportunities for classmates to reflect on previous lessons and for teachers to make decisions on future coursework and instructions. Although many school districts provide these tests for teachers, understanding how to build a strong summative assessment is an important part of the teaching process. First, I'm going to incorporate learning objectives into my summative assessment. Summative assessments should offer students the opportunity to recall, explain, or apply what they have learned. This can be through short answers related to real life examples or longer, more complex responses. One of my learning objectives was for my class to identify the different layers of the earth. So I will make my first two questions about that topic. Teachers can collect data on where students are or are not meeting benchmarks and can use this as a guide for adjustments in future lessons. Next, I'm going to make sure that my summative assessment is reliable and manageable. Reliability means that the test is an accurate measure of students' learning. The assessment should reflect what you taught and help you identify instructional gaps before they become larger issues. When I began building this test, I referred back to my earlier lesson plans. By doing this, I can make sure it strictly aligns with the specific content I taught during this past unit. Manageability means that the testing workload is achievable for both the teacher and the class. Students are not expected to memorize every detail of what they have learned, and the assessment should be practical and related specifically to the coursework. Manageable summative assessments give classmates a variety of different ways to show their knowledge and allow for teachers to grade and give feedback in a timely manner. To ensure that I hand my test back by the end of the week, I am going to make my assessment 10 questions. Finally, I'm going to model high stakes testing language in my summative assessment by using language and procedures that are similar to what students will see during state testing. The more that students are exposed to high stakes testing language, the more comfortable they will be during these bigger tests. I know that my students will be required to analyze diagrams in future state tests, so I'm going to include this one. Some schools may require teachers to use standardized assessments. When this isn't the case, teachers should work together with their department or professional learning community to create their summative assessments. By intentionally planning your summative assessments and making sure that it is reliable, manageable, and models high stakes testing, you are creating a fair, supportive testing environment. Then, watch as your students demonstrate their content knowledge. Often, summative assessments are standardized to ensure results that truly reflect what students have learned and how effectively teachers have delivered their instruction. For these reasons, it's important that all teachers administer these tests in the same way. A great place to start is with the Summative Assessment Preparation Checklist, which will help you build your classroom environment, provide appropriate testing supplies, and communicate instructions and expectations to your students. Creating a safe, distraction-free physical environment will decrease student stress while allowing them to accurately demonstrate their learning. First, you should cover up or remove any anchor charts and posters to eliminate potential clues. Make sure all desks and chairs are sufficient and in good repair. Wobbly chairs can be distracting and should be removed or fixed. Reach out to an administrator or maintenance for assistance. This will standardize environments in case your class is assigned to another teacher's room. Desks should be arranged in rows with adequate space for the test monitor to circulate in between them. On test day, students should store their personal belongings in a locker or their backpack, ensuring all electronics are turned off. Any school supplies should be stacked neatly in desks or moved to another out-of-the-way location in the classroom. 
Doing so further removes distractions and allows students to focus on the test instead of worrying about their belongings. Now that your testing environment is neat and uniform, you should begin collecting supplies for test day. First, determine whether materials will be provided by a testing coordinator or by the teacher. Then, find out if you should report to a designated location to receive testing supplies or if they will be delivered to you. Even if supplies are provided, it's good practice to have several extra sharpened pencils and erasers available, as well as blank sheets of paper. Once your supplies are in order, inform your students of the routine for testing days, including any changes to the daily schedule or locations involved. Changes in routine can be stressful, so letting students know ahead of time helps them feel safe and minimizes misbehavior. Finally, you should carefully review the testing instructions. Many schools and districts are very strict about test administration, so it's important to fully understand and follow the scripts and procedures. Ask the testing coordinator or another administrator any follow-up questions you might have. This will help you provide consistency and the most authentic, valid results for students. The Summative Assessment Preparation Checklist is the perfect tool for teachers to set their students up for success. By providing an orderly testing environment, proper supplies, and clear instructions, both students and teachers can receive accurate measurements about their learning to promote continued growth in the classroom. It looks like if we go up the river, through the jungle, over the mountains, back across the desert, and then past the tundra, we should find what we're looking for. Carolina, check this out. I found a reference to summative assessment checklists in this tome. Can you imagine? Those would be so useful for getting students prepared for testing. Yeah, they would. I'm worried about the pitfalls, though. You mean ways that the strategy can go wrong in the classroom? No. I mean, traps. Hey, Carolina Pope. The good news is we're almost there. The bad news is that we're out of fuel. Hang on, it's gonna be a bumpy landing. Hey, Allison. Hey, Rachel. Did I hear you and Gaspar just talking about summative assessments? You sure did. My students have one today in class. It's that time of year, isn't it? I feel like we as teachers give so many different kinds of assessments. What's the difference between a formative assessment and a summative assessment? Great question. So I think of formative assessments as ones that you're utilizing day to day. So these could be small little assessments such as exit tickets that you're using to check for understanding with each lesson or activity. Once you get those results in, you can make small changes. Maybe you need to reteach something or take a deeper dive. You also might identify students that could use some one-on-one -on -one assistance. You can also celebrate when your students have grasped an entire concept with those formative assessments. With summative assessments, they're a little more final and they might include multiple formative assessments or uh, be at the end of an entire unit. Right, so it's this final look back at a lot of different content that you've covered. What kinds of summative assessments might teachers give in the U.S.? So here in the U.S., we have lots of different types of summative assessments. Maybe you could use a project and students are incorporating lots of different activities and concepts into this final project. We also have state mandated tests and these are summative assessments as well. They typically happen in the spring and they're really important. They might help determine college placements or identify large gaps in the curriculum. They can also be used to 
gain more funding for different activities and for your school as well. So those kinds of state mandated assessments tend to be pretty structured. Are there procedures that teachers need to follow when they administer these kinds of assessments? Definitely, and the procedures are really important. Luckily, if you're a teacher who has to uh, give one of these summative assessments to your grade or your class, you'll get a script and a sort of explanation about the test. That way you'll know beforehand exactly what to expect and also what to say to your students when the test is happening. It's crucial that you're following this script to give students equal opportunities and to help with the understanding and making sure that it's clear for all students. If you don't follow this script exactly, there could be consequences. Like for example, maybe your entire class will have to redo the whole assessment. That's pretty high stakes. I could see how some students might find that kind of stressful. How can teachers make this experience more comfortable for their students? So preparation is key. Just because these happen in the spring doesn't mean you can't start preparing months before. At the very beginning of the school year, you can have conversations with your students about what to expect and why these assessments are valuable. This will make them more comfortable and decrease anxiety for you as well as your students. While we also cannot see the exact questions that may be on the assessments, we might know the format of the questions and we can start incorporating those into our lessons or our formative assessments. This will get your students more comfortable with those types of questions and that will help you in preparation as well. I love that. So you're building student confidence in how to take these tests even as you're building their skills so that they can be successful when they do these assessments. That sounds like a great approach, Allison. Thanks, Rachel. Did I see you putting together some lessons in preparation for your next summative assessment? Yeah, I am in the middle of writing this summative assessment and I wanted to incorporate ways to have a brain break for my students so they can increase their focus. Now that you have created your summative assessment and given your students the best environment for testing, you may wonder what comes next. Even though summative assessments measure learning at the end of a unit or chapter, before starting new material, that does not mean that the data collected is irrelevant to the present. Summative assessments provide valuable insight into your students, your instruction, and your curriculum. After students have completed a teacher-created summative assessment, teachers should focus on grading and giving feedback in a timely manner. While you may be required to continue on to new content immediately, your students still need to be informed of their progress toward their learning goals. Teachers should dedicate time to reviewing summative assessments with their students, allowing time for them to ask questions and solidify their understanding of the content. If you notice that multiple students have missed a specific concept, you can provide resources and reteaching. Because learning content typically builds on itself, it is crucial that students have the opportunity to correct any misconceptions with their content. Did it seem like a lot of students misunderstood the same learning objective? This would be an important opportunity to meet with your department or PLC to discuss the summative assessment. If your test was school created, discuss with other teachers to see if they had similar learning gaps. Determining whether the issue is instructional in nature or because of a poorly constructed test is of utmost importance to ensure that your students are given fair opportunities to succeed. The data you collect from your summative assessments should always be discussed with other teachers and administrators to check for content mastery and validity. We know that summative assessments are vital to curriculum planning and measuring student outcomes. The data you collect from these tests will help you, your team, and your school best support your students' academic success. So, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get our upcoming content.
and check out www.launchyourclassroom.com for all your professional development needs. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Launch Your Classroom. I can't believe we're finally here. If I'm reading the map correctly, the summit of assessment strategies should be just ahead. Just take it slow, okay? Remember that time you got lost in your own classroom? Oh, come on. That was just the one time. Or was it two? Couldn't have been more than four. Anyway, I'm pretty sure what we're after is just past this suspicious raised plate on the floor. Raised plate? Careful! Careful! Right. Pitfalls. Where are we? I knew you'd come. I am the protector of this place. The last of three instructors who set out to find the summative assessments and to guard them. You're strangely dressed for a teacher. Hey, Kyle, over here. There's so many. Which are the summative assessments? You must choose, but choose wisely for only the summative assessments will measure what students have learned at the end of a unit. It wouldn't have checks for understanding. That looks like strategies for a high stakes test to me. Are you sure? There's only one way to find out. You have chosen wisely. You did it, Carolina Pope. You found the lost assessments. Now we'll be able to implement classroom strategies to help students prepare for and take end of unit testing. Huzzah! And look, there's the way out. Let's head home. Follow me. I know the way. Well, there's not much point in hanging around here now. Why don't you come with us? Why not? Got lost in his own classroom, you say? Mm-hmm. After you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>